Good evening. Priest. This is Hunter Galloway inviting you to listen to another mystery playhouse drama. Tonight, The Whistler and his strange story, Bright Horizon. terrified. She hadn't planned on this. Her heart pounding this way, her hand shaking, the weak feeling in her knees. She told herself again that if the plan were to succeed, she must be bold. Everything must go off as usual. This Friday night must be exactly like everyone before it. During the eight years, she'd acted as secretary once a week for Harvey Cole. She held onto the edge of the piano for support and tried to appear calm as she watched him stumbling through a Chopin etude smiling happily when it went smoothly, frowning when it went wrong. Yes, Harvey Cole, her best customer, was having his hour at the piano after dinner. Soon there'd be the usual remark about how he'd have the good sense to retire while he could enjoy it. Then he'd go on to the letters and sign them, as usual, without bothering to read them. Yes, that was the heart of the plan. He trusted her. He always signed the letters laid out neatly in sequence without reading them. Still, Charlotte was terrified, and with good reason. No, that can't be. Um, Mr. Cole, Yes, I... of course, Charlotte. The correspondence. Well, let me see. Hmm, that's more like it. Now. Mr. Cole, we really must get this correspondence off. Not bad, old boy. Not bad. The right hand's all there. <laughs> Please, Mr. Cole. Charlotte, darling. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cole. It's just that... Must those letters be signed now? Must I keep the ghost of Chopin tapping his foot while I meddle with a stack of routine correspondence? You could just as well sign yourself. Uh, but we discussed that, Mr. Cole. We agreed to... I know, I know. I should sign them myself. The personal touch. <laughs> Very well, my dear. Bring them here. I have your pen here, Mr. Cole. Hand them to me, please. One at a time. One at a time? But, uh, Mr. Cole, I, I just remembered I made a mistake. I, I forgot to correct what? it. What? You? Oh, come now, Charlotte. You haven't made a mistake in eight years. Give them to me, please. No, 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 I, I did make a mistake. Here, I'll bring them back in just a minute. No, let me... What in heaven's name is the matter, Charlotte? I couldn't see them. If he wanted to take the letters one by one, he would have read them. Oh, don't be idiotic. He hasn't read them for eight years. He knew something was wrong. I could feel it. You're imagining things. The letter's in the middle of the pile. He won't read it. I can't, Stephen. I can't. All right, Charlotte. We can't talk it over here. Let's go out into the garden. Well, Charlotte, it was too much for you, wasn't it? At the last minute, you fail, and you're still weak in the knees as Stephen leads you into the garden. And still in the back of your brain, you can see the cold, unemotional type of the letter you'd prepared for Harvey Cole to sign. The letter in the middle of the pile, which began, I, Harvey Cole, hereby state that I have taken my life by my own hand and of my own free will. The letter Stephen had agreed to buy from you. I'm surprised at you, my dear. Those ice-cold nerves are as tight as violin strings. Yeah, listen to them. Dear Uncle Harvey, all eight million dollars of them, banging away on the piano. You know, one million of it's yours, if you have the nerve. I, I don't know what happened to me, Stephen. Funny, isn't it? Considering you started the whole thing. Every Friday night for eight years, you've come here to do his correspondence. Watched him sign it without reading it. Stephen, when you have every to go... Friday night for eight years, you've wished there were a way to get out of your grubby little rut. Get your hands on a piece of that eight million. Grab yourself a ticket over that bright horizon you've been longing for. Even a public stenographer can dream. Can't you, Charlotte? I don't know, Stephen. I looked at your uncle playing there at the piano. Don't tell me it was conscience, Charlotte. You haven't got a conscience. It took a pretty cold fish to come to me and make a deal to trade Uncle Harvey's signature for a million in hard cash. I can't do it tonight, Stephen. We've got to wait. Why? You 
looked at me so queerly when I said I'd made a mistake. He knows something. He knows about. nothing. Next Friday, Stephen, I'll do it then. I promise, Stephen. Very well, Charlotte. Next Friday. <laughs> So you return to your drab little office in town, Charlotte, to wait for next Friday, to grind out business letters for traveling salesmen and department store buyers, back to dear sir and very truly yours, while the words of Uncle Harvey's suicide letter flash on and off in your brain like a neon sign. Then it's Friday again, and you're off on the usual trip to the estate with Stephen and the family car. I have the letter, Stephen. I'm all ready. I'm sorry about last Friday. I'm not. What do you mean? Oh, it's just as well, Charlotte. It won't work. It will work, Stephen. Listen, I was nervous last Friday. That's all. I'll get hold of myself. I'm sure It's not that. As I told you, my dear, I'm not concerned a whit about your conscience because you have none. Now, I'm afraid it's a far more practical reason. I don't understand. Of course you don't, because I haven't told you. And Uncle Harvey's not contemplating suicide, my dear. He's in robust health on the best of terms with Chopin. What are you talking about? Well, simply this. If there is anything even slightly irregular about the suicide, Dr. Maxwell and that whole pack will be howling for my scalp. But the letter on his typewriter with his signature... His revolver, Charlotte. The little pearl-handled gem he reserved for his exclusive use is securely locked in the cabinet in the library. The key is gone. I've hunted high and low and can't find it. Stephen, your uncle carries that key on his watch chain. I'll get it for you. Well, good girl, Charlotte. Good girl. So the performance goes on, Charlotte. First, the usual digestible dinner. Then the customary trip to the music room. And once again, you sit there by the piano. Waiting for an opportune moment. The letter's in your hand. The suicide note again in the middle of the pile. Oh, the same place. Always get stuck on that blasted cadenza. That's it. It's all in the right hand. Finally, you stand next to him. Your heart beating like a trip hammer. Struggling to be your usual business-like self. I... I'm ready, Mr. Cole. Of course, Charlotte. Once again, the correspondent. Let's go over here to the desk. I have your pen here, Mr. Cole. All you have to do is... Oh, to... thank you. You know, my dear, it just occurred to me you've been writing confidential letters for me all these years. The only person in the world I'd trust this way. Why? Thank you, Mr. Cole. You know, Charlotte, a man with money finds it easy to become disillusioned with his fellow humans, and I'm afraid I've become rather cynical. You seem to be the one completely honorable individual it's been my good fortune to encounter during the past 50 years. And I want you to know I appreciate it deeply. I... Here's the pen, Mr. Cole. It's very kind of you to take that. There's a special reason for my speaking of it tonight, Charlotte. Well, let's see. Better get these letters out of the way first. You know, Charlotte, I think I'll read them over tonight just for fun. It's a terrible moment, Charlotte. And there's nothing you can do but stand there and watch Harvey Cole as he reads the first letter, grunts approvingly, and signs it. Everything stops. Your heart stops. Your breathing stops. Your mind is tied up in a knot and you can't even think. The uh, suicide note he was supposed to sign without reading is in the middle of the pile. Seven from the top. He reads and signs the second one. Then the third. You want to run out of the room. But your legs have gone weak, and all you can do is hold onto the edge of the desk and stand there. And then you, Charlotte. I can hardly believe it. What? What is it, Mr. Cole? <laughs> I'm surprised at you, my dear. Look here how you spell sincerely. <laughs> really, Charlotte, after all these years. Oh, I... I'm sorry, Mr. Cole. I'll make the correction. It's all right. I'll fix it. There. I I don't believe I made any other errors, Mr. Cole. Hmm? Say something, my dear? Well, it's just as I... I'm sure the rest of these letters are quite satisfactory. <laughs> I guess I won't be signing my life away. There. One more. 
There, I guess that does it. You'll mail these in the morning as usual. Yes, Mr. Cole. And now, how about some sherry, my dear? That's an excellent suggestion. You sound exhausted, Charlotte. Don't tell me having to watch me sign letters is that much of an ordeal. I've been rather nervous this week. I thought I noticed as much at dinner, and I happen to know why you're so nervous. You do? Be careful, Charlotte. Careful? What? Of Stephen. He's tricky. And right now, he's up to something. I can always tell. He has all the finesse of a bad poker player. His actions always campaign for his thought. I can't say exactly what he's up to, but I do know this. You are his next step. Me? How am I involved with Stephen? Charlotte, in a week or so, my lawyer's returning. I'm going to change my will. I'm disinheriting Stephen completely. And I'm leaving my entire estate and fortune to you. It's too much, Charlotte. The room starts to spin and you have to sit down. It's yours, Charlotte. All of it, legally. No strings attached, no letter, no murder. That's why Stephen was so irritated with you last Friday, Charlotte. It's all yours, and he was trying to buy you off. To get the thing over with in time to save his inheritance. And to keep you silent forever by making you his accomplice. Charlotte, what's troubling you? You look frightened, my dear. I am frightened, Mr. Cole. I think I understand now what Stephen's up to. Oh? He said you were growing despondent, moody. Me? Despondent? He said he was afraid of what you might do. Why, that's positively preposterous. He was afraid of the revolver you keep in the cabinet over there. He was afraid you might use it on yourself any day now. Good Lord, Charlotte, you didn't believe that. Why, It was so convincing, Mr. Cole. It never occurred to me that he would have any motive in making it all up. So, well, so I told him I'd get the revolver and give it to him. So he could put it out of your reach. Put it out of my reach? Now, why in the world should Stephen make up a story like that? Don't you see, Mr. Cole? He wants to use that revolver tonight to prevent you from changing your will. You mean that... Well, Charlotte, I... I couldn't believe that even of Stephen. He's desperate and cunning and unpredictable, but he... he couldn't turn to murder. There's only one way to find out, Mr. Cole. We must give him that revolver. <laughs> Where is he? In the music room, asleep. Good. Did you get the revolver? Here's the revolver. I have a note in my pocket. He signed it? Of course. Good girl. Stephen, you can't put it off another minute. He called the lawyer while I was there. Something about changing his will. I couldn't get it all. Wait a minute. Changing his will? How much did you hear, Charlotte? Just what I told you, Stephen. I didn't want to appear too interested. All right, all right. Will it be some time tonight? Better than that, right now. Now, you better get out of here. All right. Stephen. Yeah? Good luck. But you aren't going to leave, Charlotte. You've earned your ticket to this little show, and you're going to watch. So you stand on the terrace outside, watching through the window, hardly daring to breathe. Ten minutes. Fifteen minutes. Then a sliver of light at the door of the music room. Stephen's silhouette as he comes in the door. Inching closer to the old man, snoring in his easy chair. He raises the gun. Then, just as you and Harvey had planned, Harvey jumps up and grabs Stephen's wrist. So you were going to kill me, huh? We'll see about that. Let go of me. Let go of me, I tell you. Out. You can't see in the shadows, Charlotte. Which one is on the floor? You run around to the library door. Push it open. Walk toward the chair in the corner. You still can't see. And then... It's all right, my dear. Oh, Mr. Cole, you're safe? Yes, my dear. Oh, why, you're bleeding. It's nothing. He just nicked me in the arm. Now, excuse me, please. Police? This is Harvey Cole speaking. I've just killed my nephew in self-defense. Charlotte, it was neatly done. There wasn't a hitch. The police make a formal report. 
The coroner is satisfied completely. And as Dr. Maxwell drives you home and sees you to the door, he says... For the next week or so, Charlotte, you'd better be careful. You've suffered quite a shock. Well, well, Mr. Colby, all right, Dr. Maxwell. Now, don't go worrying about Harvey. He's fine. I'd feel so terribly responsible if anything happened to him. I'd feel as if... as if it were my fault. Rubbish. You get that idea right out of your head. I won't have you developing one of those nasty little guilt complexes now. <laughs> No, Charlotte, there's no feeling of guilt, is there? Stephen was right. You haven't got a conscience. There's only the hope, stronger now, that the bright horizon is near, almost within reach. Harvey is 65. Perhaps his injury is more serious than they're willing to admit. Perhaps when you drop in at the hospital the next day, Dr. Maxwell will tell you... Nonsense, Charlotte, he's coming along great guns. Be home by Friday, good as ever. Just a little shock, that's all. If you ask me, he's good for another 20 years at least. I had to know how he's doing. Believe me when I say he's grown closer to you because of all this. You know about the will, of course. I... I must be. Don't go in now. I've just given him a sleeping tablet. He can't have another for at least eight hours. They're rather powerful, you know. And at his age... Very well. But he did say that if you should drop by, there are some letters he wants you to answer for him. I'll let you get them if you do it quietly. I promise I won't disturb him, Doctor. I'll get the letter. So you walk into Harvey's hospital room, realizing now that it started all over again with the accent on the future, 20 years away. Back to the rut, picking up the same old habits in the same old office. Only it's worse now, with the money there waiting for you. All yours. Someday. Yes, it might have been better to let Stephen go through with his plan. But it's too late to do anything now. You pick up Harvey's letters on the nightstand by the bed. And as you do, your eyes settle on the little round cardboard box next to them. Stylol acetate. Caution. Take only as directed. Harvey's sleeping tablet. Rather strong, the doctor said. Particularly at Harvey's age. You stand there fascinated, thinking how easy it would be with the suicide note signed in the drawer of your dresser. He'd never taste them in a glass of sherry. So easy, Charlotte. You'll be home in a week. Just a week, Charlotte. Not 20 years. I'm so glad you're home, Mr. Cole. So am I. That's why hospitals were invented, my dear. To make a man appreciate his home. I... Well, I couldn't help feeling you might have left a little soon, though. Well, I'm bound to feel a little weak at first, but don't worry, my dear. I have a good many years ahead of me yet. So Dr. Maxwell said. Now, don't you become impatient and try to dispense with me to gain the inheritance. Why, Mr. Cole. Oh, no, I've upset you. Do forgive my clumsy humor. Dr. Maxwell told me about this unfortunate little guilt complex you've developed. Now, now, I'm sorry, my dear. That's all right, Mr. Cole. Is there anything I can get you? A cigar? Or perhaps some wine? Uh, not for me, thanks. Uh, what about yourself? Hungry? Well, I, I just thought perhaps a little cherry. Do have some with me. Please. Shouldn't have taken that blasted sleeping pill a few hours ago. Can hardly keep my eyes open. You must sleep, Mr. Cole. The doctor said. I know. It's not very polite of me, though, dropping off. Mustn't fight it, Mr. Cole. Let it come. <laughs> Dear, faithful Charlotte. Just relax. It's so good for you. You're a good girl, Charlotte. Good girl. It's over, Charlotte. No more 20 years. The future. The bright horizon is here now. 
You're careful to remove any trace of your presence. The wine glass, the letters, all of them except, of course, the suicide note, signed and dated today. And then you leave, walk back to town, and arrive at Dr. Maxwell's home at exactly the right moment. Why, Charlotte, how nice to see you. I'm afraid I'm just leaving, though, for Harvey Cole. Care to come along? What perfect timing, Doctor. I was hoping you'd drive me there. I'm so anxious to see him again. You're almost there, Charlotte. Just one more hurdle and you can say goodbye to the drab past. The house is quiet when you and Dr. Maxwell arrive and walk down the dark halls of the music room. Harvey is lying on the couch where you left him, as if he were asleep. Dr. Maxwell bends over him for a moment. He's dead, Charlotte. No. No, Tipsy. Oh, no, no. Easy. Oh, you told me yourself he was doing so well. I don't understand it. He, he was so disillusioned and even. He must have been despondent. He was so alone, Doctor. He still had you, Charlotte. Me? He wanted you to have part of his money now, while he could watch you enjoy it. See it do something for someone who still had a future. He was going to do that? Yes, he was. Odd, isn't it? A man with so many plans could do this. You, you do think he killed himself? He had a reason, of course. His music was gone forever. You see, Charlotte, you were so anxious to blame yourself if Harvey had been hurt last week. We didn't want to arouse that guilt complex any further. And we... Wait a minute. What matter, Doctor? This note... I, Harvey Cole, hereby state that I have taken my life by my own hand and of my own free will. It's signed. Dated today. He left it, I guess. I... It's not suicide, Charlotte. He didn't kill himself. This, this is a forgery. Why? What do you mean? I was telling you, Charlotte, he did have a reason. His music was gone. He couldn't play the piano anymore. The wound he got when Stephen tried to kill him wasn't a scratch, Charlotte. That shot partially paralyzed his right arm. He couldn't write. Why, someone killed him, Charlotte. Someone murdered him in... Charlotte. Charlotte, you! Thank you, Mr. Whistler, for a bright horizon tonight's performance in the Mystery Playhouse. Until next time, Creed, this is Hunter Galloway saying good night. Sleep time. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.